we can use a chemical reaction to help us predict reaction yield. So what is predict predicting reaction yield? It is simply looking at the amount of your reactants and predicting how much of the products those reactants would make according to that particular equation because of course every equation is different. We can compare this for example to a recipe. Let's say you buy a box of rice, one of those quick boil rice packets and the directions say that you add the box of rice along with one cup of boiling water and in turn after X amount of minutes you will then have made two cups of your cooked rice. That's basically a recipe which is, not, is uh, nothing more than a chemical equation if you look at it from this perspective. Let's say rather than the one box you wanted to make three boxes because you had guests or wanted to make more rice. So you purchased three boxes. So that means instead of one, you've purchased three. You've now changed it by a factor of threefold. If you have changed the amount of rice threefold to three boxes, you should also then change the amount of water that you're going to be adding to the same proportion, which is threefold. So you'll be adding three cups of water, not one. And instead of the two cups of rice that you would then produce, you would also multiply that by three. And you, instead of making two cups, you'd make two times three or six cups. So one box of rice and one cup of water made two cups of cooked rice. Three boxes required three cups of water and then yielded six cups of cooked rice. This recipe is very analogous to a chemical equation, except in a chemical equation, of course, we have a yield B, where your reactants and products are basically your ingredients. And whatever coefficients you have, which represent your number of moles, say two and one here, those are your amounts. So instead of a box or a cup or a teaspoon, you're using these coefficients which represent the number of moles. So this is uh, very similar again to a recipe, where the reactants and products are your ingredients and your coefficients in turn are your amounts but in what unit? In mole units. Now, if you do not want them to be in mole units, let's say you'd rather use gram units, you can always convert from moles to grams. And there is a video that I've made that will help you convert between moles and grams. But what your original recipe is, which is, of course, in terms of a chemical equation, that unit that's given is always in moles. If you want to change it to grams, you need to then convert to grams. So let's take a look at an example of how we can predict reaction yield, and we'll actually do an example where we're, con we're using moles and one in which we're using grams. Let's go ahead and take the combustion of glucose. So when you consume glucose, what happens to it? So glucose is C6H12O6 and that combines with oxygen and in turn forms carbon dioxide and water. Now this equation is not balanced. It has to be balanced in order to get your quote amounts for your recipe to be correct. So to balance this we have to add a 6 here, a 6 here, and a 6 here. Now the equation is actually balanced. Now we know what our recipe or our chemical equation is telling us. It is telling us that for every, and there's an understood one right here in front of the glucose, for every one mole of glucose, six moles of oxygen are required to react. If you don't have six moles of the oxygen, that one mole of glucose is not going to react. It needs to have the exact amount. Just like if you don't put the right amount of water with your rice, it's not going to give you the right consistency with your cooked rice. What that means is that if you add too much water, you're going to have very sticky or uh, soggy rice. And if you don't add enough, your rice will be undercooked and possibly burned. So again, having these exact proportions is essential. That's why your chemical equation has to be balanced. Just like perfecting a recipe is essential to getting the final product to be delicious. 
So let's move on to what that tells us about our products. So as one mole of glucose is required to react with six moles of the oxygen, what that will then produce is six moles of your carbon dioxide and six moles of your water. So if you were to write conversion factors, again, conversion factors being x equals y, and you can write those in terms of, say, one mole of glucose equals any one of these, six moles of oxygen, six moles carbon dioxide, six moles water, so forth. Let's just go with carbon dioxide. This is our conversion factor. It is not useful to us in this way. It's useful to us in a fractional form. So let's say one mole of glucose over six moles carbon dioxide. That's the same as saying it's equal to. This equivalency is the fraction or ratio form. You could also have your six moles of carbon dioxide be on the top of your fraction and have the one mole of glucose on the bottom. Now, this is, of course, if you wanted to look at moles to moles, which is relatively simple because it's basically your coefficients. It's given to you in plain sight. What if you did not want or need moles? but rather you wanted to use grams. So what would be the, then the gram equivalencies? And let's stick with this um, conversion between glucose and the resulting carbon dioxide that's formed. Rather, So we're not really interested in this so much or in this so much. So one mole then is equivalent to how many grams of glucose. So you'd have to calculate the equivalency of moles to grams. Again, that is in the conversion um, factor video. If you take the formula weight of glucose, that's six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens, you will find that that is 180 grams. So that's one mole of glucose is equivalent to 180 grams. Six moles of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, again, find the formula weight for carbon dioxide. One mole, or one CO2, is actually 44 grams. So six of those, or six times 44, is 264 grams. So now you have your new conversion factor in new units. So this is just like instead of cups, you're using tablespoons or teaspoons or what have you. So 180 grams of glucose is equivalent to 264 grams of carbon dioxide produced. So we can also, again, write that as a fraction. 180 grams of glucose that's combusted or reacted will produce 264 grams of CO2. Or you could put the 264 grams of CO2 on top and the 180 grams of glucose on the bottom. So. Again, this is a nice way to not only be able to read and understand what your chemical equation is telling you, but also to get all the numbers that you need. Now let's take these values here that we've used. This 180 is equal to 264, and let's actually solve a problem with it. So let's get some space here. And let's say that we want to predict how much carbon dioxide is produced from 400 grams of glucose. So we want to know 400 grams of glucose that's reacted with oxygen according to this particular equation, according to this reaction, this recipe, how many grams of carbon dioxide will in turn be produced? Again, always write your given first. 400 grams of glucose. You'll multiply by your conversion factor in fractional form. All right, we know that every 180 grams of glucose is equivalent to forming 264 grams of carbon dioxide. Which one of these will be on the top of our fraction? Which one on the bottom? Again, what we want is to eliminate grams of glucose. That should be diagonal or opposite to our given unit so we can eliminate it. So 180 grams of glucose, the 180 grams of glucose will be down here so that it eliminates that unit. 
If that's the case, then what we want to do is find what goes on top. Well, what is the equivalent of 180 grams of glucose? It is, for carbon dioxide at least, 264 grams. 264 grams of carbon dioxide. Now, why, again, the 180 of glucose on the bottom? To eliminate the grams of glucose that was given. So that when those are eliminated, the only unit you have remaining is grams of carbon dioxide. So what you would do is take 400 times 264, divide that by 180, and you would get the grams of glucose that's produced. So the first thing we did was find our mole conversion factors. One glucose made six carbon dioxides. If the problem was given and asked for moles, then you would have left it as one mole is equal to six moles. However, since this problem asked for gram values, we had to convert from our original recipe units, which was one mole and six moles, to the equivalent of one mole, which is 180 grams, and the equivalent of six moles, which is 264. Again, make sure that the gram amounts you're finding are equivalent to whatever the mole value is. One mole is 180 grams for glucose. Every one mole is 44 grams for carbon dioxide, but we had to multiply by six because six moles are used in this equation. Six moles then are 264 grams. Last of all is I used the 180 to 6, 264 ratio, putting the 180 on the bottom and the 264 on top. And how I knew how to do that is one very, very important piece of advice. And that is not only to write your units when solving these types of problems, as in grams, but write grams of what? Because here is grams and grams and grams. Grams are everywhere. They all look the same. So in order to know grams of what particular component of your equation, make sure you write grams of what compound so that you can keep them straight. Grams of glucose is written so that grams of glucose down here, there's no mistaking that this is what's being eliminated. And I put grams of CO2 up here so there's no doubt as to what we're solving for, which is grams of glucose. 400 times 264 divided by 180, and that will give you the grams of, of carbon dioxide that were produced from 400 grams of glucose.